Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. This is a podcast about knitting. My knitting, the world's knitting, yarn, and all kinds of knitterly things. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Penny and I live in central Illinois and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. Today is Sunday, January 31st, the last Sunday in January. And most of the program today is I'm going to talk about scrappy projects, hashtag scrappy Sunday. But first, let's talk about some other things. First of all, one of the hashtags that we have going on on Instagram is the hashtag top this 2021 KL devoted to sweaters. And I thought this little project up, especially for me, and I have some friends who are coming along, which I am so pleased. Right now, I'm seeing some finishes out there that um, people are finishing on their sweaters, um, or at least one sweater to start with. Um, Annette and Lindsay, they finished sweaters too, and I know that Annette has one in progress, and Bindu has one as well, and um, Becky finished one as well and started another one. So please, if you're on Instagram, um, join our hashtag top this 2021 KAL and show us your sweaters. The plan with the sweater KAL for 2021, for me at least, was to have sweaters ready to wear in the season or before the season rather than waiting till the season was almost over and then be knitting on a sweater. So that is was what really my plan was hatched up. So I'm going to have more progress to show you on the next episode of PJ Knits. We'll talk more about top this and what I'm knitting on and some sweaters. So that will be in the, uh, in the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about that. But let's start with um, hashtag Scrappy Sunday on Instagram. And I have, really, I have three <laughs> that, that are um, scrap blankets that I am knitting on. And I talked about these, oh, many episodes ago. And so I just wanted to give you kind of some updates on what I was knitting on in the scrappy department. First up is one, it's called a uh, memory blanket. And this is a mitered square blanket. Original pattern is by Georgie Hallam, and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and maybe even uh, went to her website, could be, to get that. But anyway, this is the one that I am working on. And my plan, um, starting last July, I started wanting to add some more squares to my mitered square blanket. And so I told myself, I made a goal of knitting at least one square every Sunday. And I um, did pretty well in the end of 2020. And so I made that goal for 2021 as well, that I would knit a square each Sunday. And so at the end of 2021, I would have 52 more squares. Now this particular blanket, um, I started in February 2016, and I probably played around with it for a little while before I um, uh, really gave it any a whole lot of love. Really, if I think about it, it was last um, last year um, in 2020 that I did one each Sunday, and then in 2019 um, for Advent I put in 25 squares. So that probably was when I really started adding some squares to it. And what I am using for mine is um, scrap uh, sock yarn. And most of these are from friends that have made either shawls or socks and they have donated to, to my cause. And some of them are mine. And so I'll just show you what I've accomplished so far this year. And what I did is I stuck a marker in the uh, a progress keeper in the very first one so I could keep tabs on um, each of the squares. And so I did my five in January. And they're just, I just pull them out of, um, I have a big bag and I just pull them out. And sometimes I put them back in because I don't really like the one that I'm using. Um, or they're too close to something that's too close by. I had an orange one that was that I had slated to go here and it just was too close. So I have my progress keeper here of where I'm starting on the first Sunday in January, first Sunday of the year. And then 
Each month I'm at the end, I'm going to put another uh, progress keeper of sorts in. And so you can see, um, and I, I measured this out today, it's, um, I think it's like 30 by 40. And so this is just some of what I've got in my blanket. Like I said, I'm using all sock yarn. I am using a size three signature needle. Um, it's a straight needle I ordered specifically for this. That's a seven inch long needle so that um, I wouldn't have to, in well, let's be honest. Somebody was using them and um, thought, oh, why not? Why not do that? And I've showed these before. It's a signature straight in a size three. <clears throat> let's see. And then I had my name. Hard to see that. I had PJ knits engraved in them. So small little seven inch signature needles that are specific for the mitered square blanket. And here we go. <clears throat> and there's all kinds of yarns in this. There's, a, there's some sparkly ones. There's ones from um, a couple of shawls that I did. There are um, socks that I, I think that was socks. This was from a Leading Men Fiber Arts. This was from um, Ground Pepper. Had like four or five colorways of that. And then there are other ones that people have given me. <clears throat> and the thing that was interesting about this is this one here um, was from a friend. And th this kind of reminds me, and I don't know if it is, but it could be uh, like a regia or um, opal yarn. And you know what I loved about those that do that is like, what is it going to look like next in there? And probably this would not have been my, my first choice, but when, it was fun to knit with this particular one. And then there was another one here that a friend of mine gave me not too long ago, and it's so super soft. So there's just been some cool things along the way, like I said. And I'm not duplicating any of these right now, let's put it that way. So once that it goes, um, the yarn goes into my mitered square, if there's any leftover, then it goes into my crocheted blanket. And this one <laughs> is a funny one. This, I started in late fall of 2016. I was having some, um, I guess that was the start of some hand problems that I was having. And so they're um, Attic 24. This is an Attic 24 pattern. It's a free pattern also um, out on her website. Um, and I'm using a size F hook. Now, like I said, I started this when I was having some hand problems. I have, was having some foot surgery. And I, I'm not, um, crochet is okay. I, I started out crocheting. But what I really always want to be doing is knitting. So this particular one has like over 300 stitches size F hook, and so it's going to be quite big if I ever get done with it. So what happens is once the yarn goes into the mitered square blanket, then it goes into a bag um, for the crocheted blanket. And this particular one, for the most part, lives downstairs next to my washing machine and dryer. And so when the washer is filling up or I'm waiting for it to spin out, I will put a few stitches in it. So what I will do, and I'm using, again, magic knot on this one to tie them all together because I don't want to weave the ends in. I put a stitch marker in, so I'll know in a month how far I've gotten on this one. But as you can tell, this one is going to be quite large. And I haven't gotten that far along, but this, is two rows. So, you know, when you're doing some laundry, it um, it takes a while to get across. And so, again, it'll be great for a, a huge bed <laughs> when I get done with it. So, mitered square, and then it goes into this particular uh, crocheted blanket. Then, I got this wild idea with the help of others about the habitation throw by a curious handmaid. Some friends have been making this and what I had done originally was I pulled out most of the yarns that were Caribbean blues or ocean blues 
and I put them into a bag because I wanted to do a scrappy blanket just for me in the ocean blues because for those who don't know, favorite color is the colors of the ocean. So I pulled them all out, put them in my whimsy stitches bag, and then just set them aside thinking, well, I will do some sort of um, scrappy blanket for myself down the road. And thought after my friends were doing habitation throw that this would be a perfect one for me. And again, there are no timelines on any of these scrappy blankets. And so last week I scrap, I scrap, I cast on mine. And here is the start of my habitation throw. And I'm doing this on a size six. I've got it on Likey needles that I am just trying out. I'm really a Chia Goo person, but I, I knew that um, this is going to be a long-term project. And so I didn't want to use my Chia Goo, any of my Chia Goo needles in it. So I'm using the Likey as a, just testing them out on this. And I'll just use them for the whole time. I have put a stitch marker in. so that I'll know where I have started on this one as well. And I can keep tabs when I report back to you on February. So those are some scrappy, um, scrappy blankets that I have for Scrappy Sunday. Um, on the, oh, and on the Habitation Throw, I am also using um, the Magic Knot on that one as well that you can find um, out on YouTube. I learned how to do it from um, Paula Emmons Feasley uh, Knitting Pipeline. Um, I, I, she has a video out there showing how to do it. So you can check that out. And I thought it was very, a very good video. And that's what I've been using for mine now instead of weaving the ends as well on that one. So that's kind of my scrappy Sunday report to you for January 2021. Mail call is next. And I have a couple of I have several really cool things to show you that pertain to mail call. Um, a few weeks back, a friend was knitting on some socks and posted to a group. And I, when I saw them, I said, oh, they're beautiful. They're mine. I have a size seven and a half. I was just kidding with her. I really was. But she already had me in mind for them. And what showed up in my mail a few days later was the socks and these are from Annette. Thank you Annette, they fit perfectly. I am having so much fun wearing them. They're perfect for the weather right now, you know that quite well. And um, keeping my feet warm because my feet are always cold and when my feet are cold, the rest of me is cold. And so here you are. Thank you, thank you Annette. They are so cool and fit so well. And I am just over the moon about them. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love them. And then I had, um, this is an interesting thing I have to tell you about. I am, um, my sock knitting has always been double points. And my friends know I have pretty vehemently said, I only knit on double points. Well, at Christmas time, I was doing the Advent socks and I did not get to finish them on time because again, my hands were giving me um, a little bit of fits because I was knitting on the small circumference. And so I just kind of put it down and then a friend had been talking to me about trying Magic Loop on a pair of mitts that I was going to make. And she said, just try it on that. Well, as it turned out, I didn't, I did not try it on the mitts, but I did try it out on um, my Advent socks because I was just working in the round towards the toe. And so I just thought, you know, what can it hurt, you know, at this point in time? And so I did, I liked it. Um, my, I did not get as much cramping with my hands that I had been getting in the when I was using double points. And so I think at this point in time, um, I have converted over to um, 
magic loop. And um, I'm, I have several um, sock whips. And so my current one is one um, that I am knitting on and I put it on the magic loop and I'm going to knit on it. And then um, on my Advent sock, I actually went back to double points for the toes because, you know, I wasn't comfortable yet doing that. But I think with this one, I'll be more than comfortable doing the decreases on them on Magic Loop. And so I'm really super excited about that. And I'm not getting the pain like I was. So um, I have converted to Magic Loop temporarily. And probably I, I really think for the future, I will be doing that as well. So... That's just um, a funny that I wanted to tell you about with socks. And because I'm not having as much pain with my hands when I'm doing the magic loop, I see a lot of socks in my future. So, <laughs> segue. For Christmas, a friend of mine gave me something I've never, ever had before. And my, I have a couple of few, a few, not I mean a couple, a few friends who have been using knitting socks um, with Desert Vista Dye Works yarn. And so I was gifted my first ever um, Desert, Vis Desert Vista Dye Works. And here it is. And of course, I have to show you, those of you who know me well, know I'm a Snoopy and a Peanuts fan. And the colorway is HBD Charles Schultz. Isn't that going to make cool socks and I'm so excited to get my two pair my two socks off of the Lene yarn that's in my bag that I just showed you I'm excited to get those finished so that I can cast on these next this is just super super cool I am so excited about it and it's going to be so much fun to knit with isn't that cool so my first ever, and I'm excited. I'm excited about that. And then staying in the sock um, discussion a little bit, I have, I want to show you what I finished. I finished my, as I was talking about, my Advent socks. And these were from the Cozy Knitter, and I finished them. And like I said, starting about right here, I put it on the um, magic loop and I went down and then I did my toe itself. The toe I did on double points because I wasn't comfortable, but I, I won't have any problem with that now. I was having some problems with laddering, but Annetta um, gave me a couple of hints and um, I saw um, Crazy Sock Lady. I watch her um, videos on YouTube and she said to pull tight, not just the first stitch, which I do that on double point as well, but on that second point as you change needles to also pull, uh, second stitch to also pull that one tight. And so that seemed to be helping on my Lene socks that I'm working on. So I finished these um, just a couple of weeks ago, and this was, again, the Cozy Knitter Advent Sock. When I got done, I had two um, skeins left. And so what I want to do is I want to take these two skeins and I'll probably have to add to them for the um, for heels and maybe some added, added um, yarns if I don't have enough because I don't know how far these will take me in a sock. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit um, this pattern. It's called Get Shorty Socks. This is by Irene Designs. And this is on Ravelry, and it's a shorty sock. And so I think I could put one of my um, solids for the cuff. And if I had to, as I progress down, I could take some of my um, scraps and um, go to the toe as well. So I'm excited about doing that um, with my leftovers. And we'll see how that works out. I'll report later on that. But that's a new pattern. Um, that I've seen. Um, Irene is one of the three gals that do um, the podcast on YouTube, Three Ply Podcast. And they, I've talked about them before. They are from um, Elgin, Illinois, which is, you know, um, three hours, maybe two, three hours away from us. I've been to the shop, Elgin Networks, that they talk about um, with a friend many years ago. So 
Um, I, this is fun to um, be able to knit one of her patterns. And I'll um, keep you posted because I think this will be a great one for in the tennis shoes this um, spring as well. Um, in the, I'm working on my tweaking my vanilla sock pattern. Um, I have talked about that one um, in a couple podcasts before. I use um, an old Regia pattern that I've converted, and then what I've done recently on my um, Advent socks is I kind of used some of Susan B. Anderson's tips. She um, has two ones free. It's how I make my socks. And the other one is the smooth operator socks um, for decreases is what I have been kind of um, tweaking my pattern to go with, with those. So those are some of the uh, patterns that I kind of use when I'm um, converting my socks. And so I'm going, and what I'm doing is I'm working on towards making for me a better fitting sock. And what I, what I do on my cuff is I start out with like a size two needle um, on 64 stitches. And then after the, uh, at the heel, I'm starting to go down to size one because I'm finding that I need to have a little bit um, uh, lesser gauge on my, um, on my, through my instep, through the um, toe decreases. So I'm going down to a one and making those tighter stitches because I'm such a loose um, knitter. So I'm working on that. Um, I did that on my uh, Advent socks. I went down to a size one on them because I wanted to make sure. I, um, a lot of times what's happening is my, um, after the heel, it's a little loose and, and not as, you know, negative ease, as much negative ease as I'd like to have. So those are kind of, that's kind of a, um, a segue into um, sock knitting. And also I want to just say, we're, I'm going to leave the um, thread open on Ravelry and it's going to be mistletoes. Um, instead of um, going on to Sock Fest, I thought we were already doing mistletoes and let's just leave it and show, you, show us your socks on the PJ Knits Ravelry group under mistletoes. And we'll just leave that um, thread just as it is for the whole year long. So I wanted to let you all know that. Um, mail call, more mail call and I wanted, I have to tell you about this. I'm so excited about a couple of things. I belong to a group, Loopin' About, and every year for three or four years, I think this is the fourth year, I've talked about it before, we do knitness. And you get um, in the fall um, a partner, uh, and it's anonymous. So they don't know that you're knitting for them. And then the deal is you start knitting for them after whenever you want to. I actually start after Christmas because so many people are, I'm knitting, I'm knitting for gifts and things like that. And so the idea is to knit um, after Christmas for somebody else, for the, your, the person you've been given their name. Um, and, um, and then send it to them um, sometime in February, January, February, along with some goodies. And this year... My person who had me was Lindsay, and didn't she do a fantastic job? This particular shawl is called Breathe and Hope, and it's by Casa Pinka. Um, it was a knit along, and I, I was sad that I did not do the knit along after I saw everybody knitting on these. And I was sad that I didn't buy the yarn because I had seen the yarn. It's Emma's yarn. Both of these are Emma's yarn. And I have, I got the leftovers so that I can um, put them into my blankets, which will be so special. But I just love this. She did a fabulous job on it. It's my colors. And this was so cool. And Lindsay, I can't tell you how much I'm going to get, how much wear I'm going to get this, and how much I appreciate this. This was so much fun. And so you all have to just take a look at that. I love this. We love that and it's in my colors. So then also as part of Knitmas, what you do is usually put some goodies in there. And I, I got a lot of cool goodies. I just can't, I got a mask. I got, um, uh, a peanuts mask, which is great. It fits wonderful. I got some bowl cider, um, that I, uh, a packet of to put stuff in mulled cider. I'm just trying to decide whether to put it in cider or should I put it in wine and mullet. Um, I can't wait to um, try that out. 
um, I got all kinds of pens and I got a couple of journals because we're uh, heavy into journaling and um, it's just some cool notebooks. I got a, a pencil bag with lovely, lovely pens, erasable pens for my journal and for my project notebook. Thank you, thank you. And then I also got a bag because you know I love bags, guys. Knitter's going to knit. <laughs> and this is so super cool. And so I've been waiting to put yarn in it. I wanted to wait until I could show it on the podcast. So Lindsay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brenda, thank you for my yarn. And Annette, thank you for my socks. What, what fun. Okay, books and bags. I've been waiting for this for two months for this book to get in. And I bought it last week. Um, released um, and I bought it for my local yarn shop, uh, the Fiber Universe in Peoria, Illinois. Star Wars, Knitting the Galaxy. Um, my sons, both of them, are <laughs> avid fans of Star Wars and they have been since they were kids. And I can't tell you how many times we had to watch these things and um, how many Star Wars things they have. And so I had to get this book. It is very similar to the Harry Potter in the way they have placed it out. They have stories. They have pictures. Um, they talk about the patterns themselves. It is, it is full of cool stuff. The, the charts are in color. The, it's just wonderful. And they have pictures. We'll start here from the movie. And then, isn't this adorable? So there is just so many cool, cool things in this book. If you know, if you have uh, Star Wars fans, um, you'll want to pick this up. Whoops, there's some. What fun. And I have to say, I only saw the first Star Wars movie, but I, you know, I do know who, what that is. So anyway, this is the latest book to come into my library, Star Wars. Knitting the Galaxy. I recommend that one. Okay. And bags. Okay. Are you ready? The latest Hohe bag. It's a Pampa bag in teal. I had seen her teal bags probably at Christmas time. And I was like, I don't need another bag. I have a pompa bag like this from that's in the grocery girl's colorway. But when I got saw the teal, I just could not resist. And of course, I had a couple of friends telling me, a few friends telling me to buy it, and I did. Oh, it's lovely, and it will house a sweater. Look at that. So that is the latest bag for my collection, Hohe and Co. Loving that. Okay, finished objects. Showed you my socks. Finished a hat. And this is funny. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave it on very long. But anyway, I finished this hat in January as well. And the story on this one is, this is called the Mixed Pom Pom Hat. The yarn is Loopy Mango. And I received this as a prize in 2019 from Do You Knit. I was watching their uh, YouTube live and they said, take a picture of us, of you watching um, our podcast, send it, tag us on Instagram, and they'll draw a winner. And lo and behold, in 2019, when I was at home for some um, recovery from some surgery, I won the kit. I started the pattern, and then I put it away, and I thought, why not pull it out in January? I, most of all, I love, <laughs> and I will get a lot of wear out of this. This is Loopy Mango. It's a chunky yarn, so it went really super fast, and I love this pom-pom. Isn't that fun? I will wear this and it gets lots of wear. It's going to be uh, very, very warm. So that's the project that I kind of finished up on. 
And I wanted to, um, that's all I really finished because I'm working on my sweaters. But I also wanted to talk about my journal. And this is um, something that I have talked about before on the podcast. And I'm just going to follow up today because it's the end of January. And I have brought up my January plan. And again, this is just a plan for me. And this is not, there's no hard and fast rules that if I don't finish something that's on my list, it's no big deal. It's my plan and it can be subject to change, my change. But anyway, for January, I had a few things on my list. And one of them was Knitmas, which I knit and passed on. I did a baby blanket for my daughter-in-law's um, for my daughter-in-law's sister. It was the Heaven Leaf Heathers. I finished it, and there it is. I also finished. My knitmas that went out to Alicia, and this was the Air Hugs by Shana Lyons Design. I finished that. I did all of my five squares. So my hashtag three knit whips was my advent shawl that I finished that I showed last time, my mixed pom-pom hat, and my cozy knitter advent socks. Now, I still have some things on my list for January that did not get completed, and they'll just move over to the next month. And as I finish them, I'll check them off of my list, or they become a whip for a future time. And as I said before, no judgment on my whips. If I want to cast on 10 sweaters today, I will, because they're mine, and I own them. So... I'm super, super excited about where I have come so far in January. Now, I wonder about the rest of you, but when I used to work retail a long, long time ago, January was usually the cleanup month, the inventory month, right? And I think with um, the pandemic and COVID and all that, we've all been doing a lot of cleaning, and so have I. And I got a super cool idea from Hey Brownberry, Um, on her podcast number uh, 92, she was talking about cleaning up and cleaning up her knitting notions, which gave me a thought that I needed to clean up my accessory bags and my, my stitch markers because I had them all over. And what I have is a, um, fishing tackle box, small one that I've had forever. It's two sided. And this always sat by my knitting chair upstairs. It had a lot of markers in it. But the problem was, most of the markers in here were not the ones that I wanted to be using. So what I did, decided to do after watching uh, Mars on on, um, her podcast, I decided to go and reorganize mine. And so what I did is I took out all the stitch markers that were in this that I were not I I wasn't using, and I put them into another one, and they're all in here, and these are in my spare room in a drawer, so when I need them, I can go to them and get them. And so I put, what I've done is I put a lot of round markers that I like to use on occasion, and they're the rubbery ones, and I've, I've got quite a collection in different sizes of those. I put those in there. I put my special markers in here um, from retreats and things like that so that I know where I, um, when I need them. And most of the time, I will use these markers for um, the start of the round markers so they're a little bit differently. So I've got bunches of special ones that I have collected in here that I've been getting. And so they are in, and I leave them in my knitting room. So then the next step for me was to put the ones that I was always using in my box next to my knitting chair in the living room. And what the ones that I am particularly fond of right now is I have some special ones here 
These again are my beginning round markers that I like to use and they're usually danglies and I like to use those for beginning of the round so I know where, I, where I'm starting at. Distinctly different than all the rest. But my latest obsession um, with the stitches, stitch markers that I like the most are the Cocoa Knits ones. And that I have divided all the rest in here on this side are my Cocoa Knits ones. And these are the ones that I'm using all the time. I just really like the idea of them. I liked my rubberized ones too because um, these, you know, the dangly ones are really nice to have, but I have found that when you're trying to do something in the round or a quick, you know, and you're knitting fast, they just don't want to move off the needle onto the next needle as easy as the round ones do. So I am totally enthralled with the round ones, especially Coco Knits right now. So that's what's in here. And then in the other side, I have some, just a couple of special ones that I uh, haven't gotten rid of. And then I've got the pins that tighten up my chai goos and my knit picks. And then I've got some other um, removable markers that are in the safety pin. And so I've got them in there and then the little, um, some little post it notes. And then I've got some little wooden ones that say left sleeve front, beginning of round. And these I may um, occasionally use and hook them in to the yarn into the garment itself as I'm knitting on that. So those, these are what um, I'm keeping. Um, I have rearranged my markers and put them into something that I'm using all the time and easily accessible to me. So I got that idea, I said, again, from Hay Brown Berry. Um, I thought it was a very smart idea. And um, then I went to my notion bags and started cleaning them up a, a little bit as well. So oh, anyway, so that's what I'm kind of doing for January and what I've done for January. So that's all that I have on my table, I do believe, to talk to you about. Um, I want to remind you that we are continuing the top this 2021 KAL. Please share your um, in progress and your finished sweaters um, in the Ravelry group under the thread. And um, the Ravelry group is PJ Knits. And also please tag, um, uh, hashtag them on Instagram as well. Hashtag top this 2021 KAL. It is a KAL that goes till the end of the year, and we're going to build a sweater wardrobe together. And currently we're working on winter sweaters, and we will be working on winter sweaters through March. And it can be whips, even if you have whip, a whip that you started last year and didn't get done. Bring it on out, and um, let's talk about it. We'd love to see what you're knitting on. Give us some ideas for knitting on sweaters. And that will be the um, topic for the next uh, podcast in a couple of weeks in February. And that's it for now. And until then, have a great knitting couple of weeks. Stay safe. Knit on. Talk at you later. Bye.